Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending this session. Thank you also to Metropolis to invite us to present uh, to this uh, nice uh, agora. Uh, my presentation, I'll ask you to resist the five uh, initial minutes, which I have to do the classical introduction and to talk about the project, uh, why we were invited here. And then uh, I'll invite you to stay to listen about two iconic projects that we have developed in, uh, in my institution, the Barcelona metropolitan area, that uh, I assure you that you will uh, feel as excited as we are uh, to, develop, to develop them. Okay. So a little bit of context to understand uh, you, uh, our, our institution, we are a public, the public administration of Barcelona and the 35 municipalities around, around them. Uh, to have you a little bit of physical context, we are uh, 3 million people in a really quite dense area. So uh, uh, you can see comparing to, to Catalonia, so how dense and how important is our metropolitan area. We have the classical powers you can find in the, any metropolitan area in the world, so spatial planning and housing, environment, which includes water cycle, waste, energy, and also transport and mobility. Our budget is 750 million uh, this uh, last year. And now I'll, I'll explain you about this, this project, how, why I am here. Uh, the mega project from Metropolis, this association of, uh, of cities and metropolis around the world. Uh, we, were, uh, we presented this project, mega project, in this uh, pilot project call uh, from Metropolis. We were first ranked. And the, the goal of the project was to share experiences and best practices around the three partners we were, which was Montevideo in Uruguay, Lyon in France, and Barcelona, we were leading this project. Uh, methodology was a classical one, comparing uh, a comparative diagnosis of competences, of issues, uh, of uh, challenges, international workshops, expert dialogues, technical field trips. And then also it's interesting to, to mention that we capitalize a previous project of uh, the same call, this Metropolis uh, pilot projects, uh, which was called Climate Plus. Okay. Yes, this is a, a, a resume to, to see how we compare the three different areas, which we have this uh, population, uh, diverse population, different competences. Uh, in France, you know, uh, or if you know, if you don't know, I explain you. Uh, this, uh, there's this uh, vertical integration of uh, the energy sector, full, fully public. And then some lessons and that we learned. This you can go online and you can read uh, in more detail. I will underline one lesson. When we exchange experiences among cities, among metropolis, we found uh, a big, big problem, which is that at the state level you have always the same competences. You know that you own a TSO or a DSO, and it's easy to, to compare, to share. Uh, on the other hand, in cities, in metropolis, it's really diverse uh, competences and targets and goals between cities, so really a, a strong effort is needed to share experiences, to do an, an effectively uh, benchmarking between cities. It's a lesson that I underlined from, from this project. For example, in our case, in Spain, uh, we have generation and utility level, which is free market, but transport and distribution, it's a regulated, strong regulated market, which is important for cities, because when we talk about energy transition and, and climate emergency, cities are where the problem is and where the solution is. So it's important to to, to, to put together uh, an old uh, distribution of competences with a, a modern problem, which is energy transition, which is mainly local. 
Then a few words about our energy and climate plan, which is also online. I invite you to, to go in our website, in AMB website, and, and, and look to them. Our climate plan uh, stressed that Mediterranean cities uh, will be the most impacted by climate change, uh, much more uh, over the average impact of climate change in, in the world. For example, here you have some, Im some images of the downscaling we've done to, to uh, carefully understand uh, how climate change impacts uh, in uh, temperature raising, in rainfall, in uh, sea level uh, up, uh, upstream. Then these are our objectives quantified. We are committed with the same objectives of, co of Covenant of Mayor that fits the Paris Agreement, so 40% uh, reduction of CO2 emissions, 30% renewables, and 30% energy efficiency by 2030. Our, our climate is changing already. We know we have uh, much more uh, heat waves. We have a, decrease, a slightly rec a decrease in rainfall, but mainly we have uh, huge storms concentrated in, in short periods and also, as I mentioned, sea level. Our action plan is divided in these four axes. And then now uh, I'll go, as I see that you, you have resisted uh, my, the majority of you, I'll go uh, with the singular cases, case studies. I'll divide in, in two, main, uh, two big parts. First, I'll explain you projects about big data and energy, which is uh, a, a key fact uh, in our organization to address good policies and informed policies and um, uh, let's say uh, the, 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 the energy needs that, the, the data needs that we have to, to, to plan. And then a second block we, where I, I, will, I will talk about uh, a cutting edge innovative project about energy and mobility, a vehicle to grid technology which we are implementing in, in our area. So first, energy big data infrastructure. In AMB, we have three different big uh, data, data sets related to energy. I'll explain you about the first uh, two ones uh, data sets. First is a residential microcartography, which is a unique uh, data set uh, in Europe uh, in, in hands of uh, public authorities. And then the Metropolitan Energy Observatory, observatory which uh, put together energy billing in, of our 36 city councils. So uh, first, this residential microcartography, where we uh, gathered uh, data from consumption and contracted power, we have uh, these uh, uh, plots uh, of residential areas uh, quantified in energy and power. So this is a 200 million uh, registers data set is the first high grass cartography by a public authority uh, in Europe, as far as we know. And these are some of the images that uh, we extract from this cartography. This is a Barcelona metropolitan area, so here you can find in red colors where uh, natural gas consumptions are uh, higher. Instead, in the center of Barcelona, you can see that the consumption per a square meter is much more um, lighter. This is another image from the north part of Barcelona, municipalities that we have around. OK. Yes, and here you can imagine that uh, the enormous uh, applications that we can uh, extract from, from these data sets. For example, we can go re really, really uh, detailed in the PV self-consumption analysis. So for example, fixing thresholds uh, on, on diverse uh, urban tissues. For example, in, in single family uh, households, we can put a 100% threshold of uh, self-sufficiency uh, from PB. But instead, we have detected that, for example, in the center of of Barcelona, what we call a champla, so uh, really dense uh, urban area, 
the, the self-consumption uh, potential is uh, just arrive at 10%. Then also important second is uh, the detection of energy uh, vulnerable areas. Uh, we have a lot of energy poverty in our country, especially in, in, in Barcelona. This data helps us to uh, establish policies of energy refurbishment, really, really concentrated in those places that uh, need uh, uh, these, uh, these uh, operations uh, in, in a in higher scale. Then uh, the, these three last uh, points are really important and are really, really innovative because uh, it's true that DSOs and TSOs have this data and that they are modeling their investments and, and their operations thanks to this data. But which is, what is innovative it, is that in public authorities, we can uh, access to this data and we use it to simulate future scenarios uh, at a high resolution. So now we are in the process of understand the correlations between energy consumption and building socioeconomic data and climate data. Then we can do a, mod a modeling of this residential energy behavior. And then finally, we, we will do this simulation of future scenarios, putting together, for example, uh, the rising uh, temperatures that will affect uh, the energy demand in residential areas, mainly uh, uh, in, the, in the cold demand, so air conditioning demand, which is uh, a key factor that is not being considered in, in most of the, the analysis. The second big, big data set that uh, I would like to explain to you is this Metropolitan Energy Observatory, which puts together all the city council uh, billing uh, both electricity, natural gas, and other uh, fossil fuels. So we have two different uh, applications. First, this one is, is a, a big uh, dashboard for us, for policymakers, for uh, city councils, to uh, in a really um, fast and reliable way understand how their consumptions are, are done. And it's important because uh, our perspective is that we have to be exemplary. So to have all the data uh, really uh, uh, easily accessible and easily com comparable with other param parameters, it's really, uh, we think it's, it's, it's really uh, crucial nowadays. And then also the second one, uh, I brought you an example of the, what we called citizen energy portal, where all this uh, billing data from municipalities is put together uh, and it's, let's say, well shaped to a common citizen that doesn't know about energy to understand what their city councils are doing to address a climate change uh, challenge. Okay, it's not very smart, this pointer. So uh, different applications that we can have from, uh, from this platform, from this second data set that I am explaining you. There's the first one which is very important for us, for policymakers, which is to have a one-click benchmarking tool. Now, uh, how we are doing benchmarking to understand if our sc schools, for example, are consuming too much or our sports centers are well um, operated. Now, it's impossible. We have a lot of Excel data sheets. Uh, we put a lot of time to really correlate uh, uh, good all, all these uh, parameter, param, param, parameters sorry, that we have. So with this tool, we can easily access to, the, to this data and compare and rank our schools where are in relationship with the average, for example, of uh, Barcelona metropolitan area. Also very important identify best practices. Thanks to this uh, platform, now we can know which municipality of, uh, from the all uh, 36 municipalities are uh, having the uh, best uh, ratios in, for example, uh, lighting, public lighting consumption per, uh, per lighting point. Then also it's important for us as a, a, a key policy to be transparent, transparency and 
uh, efficient communication with citizens in the energy field, which is not an easy field to communicate. It's very important, thanks to this uh, uh, public portal, citizens can address to their policymakers uh, to control them if they are doing good our, their job and if they are uh, applying the, the good policies to reduce energy consumption. Okay, I'll go uh, fastly to the second project. First, I explained to you about energy and big data, which is uh, really important at, at, at this time for us. But also, there's a second uh, main uh, challenge, which is energy and mobility. 40% of our emissions in Barcelona metropolitan area uh, are from uh, transport, mainly uh, private transport that enters uh, from outside Barcelona to inside Barcelona to uh, its daily uh, work job. So this project, Fotolineras, which is a, a weird uh, word uh, game in Catalan that makes photovoltaic and gas stations, uh, try to solve uh, and address this, this big issue. Uh, specifically, I will explain to you uh, the, the cutting edge technology that we think that will be the revolution in energy and transport in the next decade, with, which is B2G, vehicle to grid. I don't know how, how many of you know about this technology, but I'll explain you in the next minutes how does it work. So Fotolineras, this uh, carport pergolas, this uh, project that we impulse, it's mainly a self-consumption PV pergola, which we use for two different consumptions, public buildings in one hand and electric vehicle charge in the other. This is the standard figures of the projects we are uh, uh, impulsing now. So 10 kilowatt uh, PV pergola for parking spots. And an important uh, fact that we try to uh, that we try to impulse is that one. This is a, a common scheme of of one of the projects, which is try to uh, try to take profit from this energy uh, concept to go to another mobility model. So public transport is our main policy. Our main policy in in AMB. So we try with these projects to place uh, all the spots next to big uh, railway uh, commuter, commuters. So uh, this is the example. Here our citizen would arrive with, this, with his car from outside AMB, will park in the, in the PB pergola, and will take uh, fastly the uh, train to enter city center. So a classical park and ride system but with PB and with electric recharge. This is a map of uh, how, how we are deploying our, our network of, of photolineras. These projects uh, help us to face these three goals, so not only energy transition, but also air quality, which is, as you may know, uh, a, a huge challenge in cities nowadays, especially in, in, our, in our context. The project, sorry, <laughs> the project has uh, several strengths. Uh, I, I'll talk to you about uh, one of them, which is we avoid batteries, so we recharge cars when sun is sh shining. <laughs> it's easy to understand. We don't need fast, ultra-fast, ultra-technology chargers, Tesla chargers, 100 kilowatts. It's not needed. Climate change and energy transition is also about decreasing. It's also about changing our conception of uh, consuming. So if we just, if we just need a seven kilowatt charger, why installing a hundred, per, a hundred kilowatt charger, which by the way, in Spain, as you may know, uh, it's, it's, it's really an economic uh, challenge because uh, the fixed part of our bill, uh, it's, um, mainly the, the half of the, the overall uh, bill. And now I'll go directly to the B2G technology. Uh, this pilot project that uh, we installed in Molins de Rey, which is one uh, little city 
uh, in the metropolis of, of Barcelona. Uh, a B2G uh, vehicle to grid charger is a bidirectional charger. So it can uh, charge the car, charge the batteries, but also in the same time, it can inject energy from the batteries to the grid. Now, maybe if you are not familiarized with this technology, you could ask me why discharge batteries when is charging batteries the main fear that citizens have when they want to change to electric vehicle. You will understand it in, in a minute. This is some photos of, of the spot. You have here so the photovoltaic pergola. And this is the big, innovative, cutting edge uh, charger uh, that allows us to do the, the V2G operation. It's the first public uh, bidirectional uh, system in Spain and one of the first in Europe, uh, public, of course. In Europe, what's happening now, for example, in Denmark, I explained you if, if you are not familiarized with energy markets in Europe. In Denmark, they have a huge penetration of wind power. So uh, this um, makes that the energy system has huge unbalance of frequency. So uh, you need technologies to regulate this uh, frequency. And one of the technologies is B2G. At, at the end, B2G are batteries, stationary batteries, that sometimes can uh, move and uh, can give a service to someone to move around. So uh, in Denmark, for example, uh, they are really, they, they are uh, gathering a lot, a lot of revenues with this system because there's a frequency regulation market. In Spain, we are uh, thinking that this market will be transposed uh, begin of, of next year. So finally, this is, this is a smart grid project. We, may, maybe in this, in this conference or in others, we were years and years listening to smart grids, uh, listening that smart grids are the future, and finally, smart grids are here, are uh, in reality in a project that we can measure, that we can touch, that we can understand. We call that this is the next revolution, uh, the, the next decade, sorry, revolution, because uh, to have a 100% renewable system, which is another thing that we have listened a lot uh, in conferences, we need two things. We need a lot of renewables, but a lot of renewables, uh, a change in scale uh, from what we have now. But there's and th this first element, OK, we know that we can uh, arrive, we can reach it. But then there's storage. As you know, renewables are an intermittent source of energy. Uh, not always we have sun, not always we have wind. So we need systems to uh, store this energy when we have surpluses, and we need systems to give energy when we have uh, scars. Uh, for this reason, to have uh, batteries, to have a storage, intelligent storage is the next decade revolution. In some places in the world, we, have, uh, we are seeing that they are installing, for example, in deserts, huge capacity of a lot of batteries, uh, for example, in Asia. Our model is a more distributed model and more empowering model uh, to citizens. So we are trying to profit, to take profit from cars that are 90% of the time stopped in their parking spots to use as stationary batteries. <laughs> OK. This I already explained. A bidirectional network, so a smart grid, is a grid that is connected with IT uh, uh, technologies and that is able to flow in both uh, directions. So not only from uh, production uh, centrals to, consum to consumers, but also from consumers to the grid. So this operation that we are doing now in this first phase of the project in this city that we have installed, we are still in B2B, so vehicle to building. Vehicle to building is a, an, a specific case of vehicle to grid, which is, which is vehicle to everything. Vehicle to, vehicle to building because 
uh, as I explained to you, in Spain, we don't have uh, already uh, translated this uh, European Energy Markets Directive that regulate a secondary markets, so frequency markets and other markets. This is the concept I, I've explained to you. So the, obje the objective is to flatten the, the demand curve. So uh, injecting energy when we need and storing energy when we have uh, surpluses. And this uh, nice picture of uh, a duck, the duck curve, I don't know how many of you are familiar with, with this concept. The, the duck curve problem is a problem that they have defined our friends in California. Uh, California, you know, is a sunny uh, country and they have a lot of PB, of decentralized PB in residential rooftops. So they have uh, found that if you have a lot of photovoltaic during these sunny hours, so between 10 and, and 3 p.m., you have this demand curve. So the demand curve in the, in the mainly sunny hours is really, really low. Even they have negative prices. So the grid is paying you to inject uh, this uh, energy in, in the sunny hours. But then there's a big, big problem. If you don't have a storage, when the sun uh, sets, you have a really dramatic increase in, in energy demand. And this is not obviously how to solve from the grid perspective. So if, you, if, we, um, if we finally uh, reach this uh, demand curve flattening, the duck curve problem uh, disappears. OK, B2B applications. Uh, when, when, we, when we'll have B2G, these applications will, in, will increase enormously, obviously, and also the revenues we'll have. But for the moment, we have these applications, peak power uh, reduction, this uh, sports center building where we, are, where we are connected in this uh, spot has really huge consumption. So, so we help the building to reduce these peaks. Consum consumption reduction in rush hours. So we have uh, our tariff structure that, for example, in summer, uh, in the evenings, uh, energy is much more expensive than, for example, in, night in nights. Here we can play a lot with, with this. And the difficulties of a pilot project, uh, maybe you, you'll find this funny in a, a smart city uh, uh, conference, but pilot projects have uh, common problems and uh, lack of installers expertise. We ourselves, we learned a lot during the process. So uh, the integration was really complex. You have to integrate IT, you have to integrate communications, you have to integrate algorithms that in an intelligent way charge and discharge the battery uh, depending on a lot of parameters. Lot of manufacturers really the, when we, at the beginning of, of 2019, when we installed uh, this project, uh, the chargers available for this B2G technology were re really, really scarce. So we were in a TRL 6, 7, 8 aisle set. So it was still uh, experimentation, scientific experimentation. Lack of aggregation and management platforms. Uh, to operate these chargers, you need someone that remotely decide when to charge and when to discharge, OK? So um, we finally find a, a company, a startup in California that have this commercial software and communication abilities to connect to a B2G system and to operate remotely. It wasn't easy. And then users and prepared electric vehicles. If you find difficult in our country, not for example in Norway, but in our country to find electric vehicles, surely that you, have, you haven't seen a lot. We have different problems. First, free charging. In our country, charging of electric vehicles is still free. So uh, how can I implement a B2G project when I want to uh, give revenue to an EV user for the availability of his battery. 
if the charge is free. So <laughs> you, you, you can imagine the, the situation of going to the spot, charging in the free charger, and once you are full, you go to the B2G and you discharge uh, having a revenue. Okay, uh, until we don't have uh, tarification, a, f a fair tarification of charging in Spain, we can't uh, fully implement B2G systems. Then cars. If you find difficult to charge electric vehicle, because you know that there are a lot of different standards and not, on, not all the electric vehicle chargers have all these standards, B2G is even more restricted, so only Japanese standard, only Chademo standard has developed the B2G technology. Europeans, we are a little bit, uh, is arriving. The, the type two Meneke's technology, they say that, that maybe in two, three years they have uh, a readily prepared prototypes. I show you now to, to end up some images of how we operate uh, this uh, B2G spot. We have now two vehicles of the munis this municipality, Molins de Rey uh, fleet, is a Nissan Leaf and Nissan ENB 200. So we operated through this remote management platform, uh, aggregation platform from this company, this startup, Newbie. And we have two key elements. First, we have a mobile uh, APP for users. So the user can set uh, its schedule. I want, for example, I want my battery charged uh, at a 70% range at, for example, 4 p.m. Until this time, you grid, you aggregator, operator, you can do whatever you want with my battery. And then a virtual uh, platform that is able to decide when we need to charge, when we need to discharge, regarding uh, and analyzing uh, lots of, of electric parameters. This is uh, an image of, of the APP. So here you have, this is funny, you have the energy ch charge button. For example, if, if you have given uh, the order to the platform that uh, you can give the availability of your battery until 5 p.m., but you change your plans and you have to go to take your kids at school because they are ill, you push the emergency charge button and all the operation stops. So uh, the charger begins to fully charge uh, at the maximum uh, power your, your battery. And here, for example, this is an example of how you can set your time range, your schedule, and uh, the deep of the battery available that you want to give to, to the grid. This is an image of the, the platform from where we control this remote operation. And, sorry, <laughs> and here is an image uh, to make you understand that the project is working it's working fine. And finally, for example, you have here, this is the overall uh, consumption of the system, so a sports center and electric vehicle spot chargers. In uh, orange, you have the overall consumption of all the system. In red, you have the import of energy from the grid. In green, you have the PB production. Okay. Well, in green, you can see. And uh, in black, you have the curve of the energy injection from batteries to the system. So you can see that from 11 uh, to, to 12, we had this specific day uh, nearly zero energy building. So a building that didn't consume anything, thanks to two elements, as we said in the beginning, renewables, so the PB pergola, and second, storage, so the injection from the B2G charger. This is a, a small scale project. Once we, 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 we can scale up these systems, the problem of energy transition is solved. This is the profiles of the consumption of the building to you, from, for you to understand that it's a building that mainly consumes uh, in the evening. So, uh, has a lot of sense to uh, store energy during the PB production hours to uh, put this energy in all more useful uh, times. Sorry. 
what I wanted to show you is the most important, the, the heart, the heart of, of the system, which is the algorithm that decides when, uh, when sorry, to charge, when to discharge, and at what power. This is a normal schedule, uh, for example, in summer. So if you are familiar with the tariffs in Spain, uh, a 3.0 tariff in, in summer, we have a really expensive, expensive period between 11 and 3 p.m. So here we give the order to have discharged the batteries. And for example, in night when uh, tariff is really, really uh, cheap, we can give the order of fully charged. And this to, ch to show you that also the project is working really good in this uh, first month of operation. We have some issues, obviously, in the first month, but now we've taken really a good rhythm and we, uh, we have injected from batteries uh, almost 700 kilowatt hours in this first, first month of operation. EB is slowly, slowly growing, finally. Uh, it, it, when I do other conferences, uh, when I did other conferences uh, some months ago, uh, this uh, energy balance was uh, strongly unbalanced. But now you begin to see that at 10 kilowatt uh, PV uh, pergola, it begins to, to be a little pergola, a, a little uh, electricity production system for the growing EV sector that uh, hope, hopefully uh, at the end it, it's beginning to, to grow in Spain. And to end up, uh, a, a conclusion to a little bit focus or give my, my vision of what's the main focus of, um, of uh, climate emergency, of uh, energy transition, which is technology is OK. Electric vehicles is OK. We all agree that uh, technology is important and that we need a lot of electric vehicles in the system. But first, we need it from renewables, because one of the main, um, the main things that, that I listen when people criticize, people from fossil fuel car industry criticize electric vehicles is that in Germany, uh, if you don't ensure that the source of energy that is used to charge vehicles, it's fully renewable. You have a really uh, black energy mix there. You have a lot of uh, uh, carbon, a lot of uh, coal, sorry, a lot of uh, nuclear, a lot of polluting uh, technologies. So how we can do our uh, electromobility fully green? We have two options. First, we can um, wait for, the, for our national energy mix to be fully 100% renewable. This in Europe will happen in 2050 if we really change our mind and if we do a really green new deal, so if we put in place massive investments. But in the meanwhile, we have another option, which is the centralized uh, renewable production. So for example, our projects and to really end up, the most important thing we, as is our vision in, in Barcelona metropolitan area, which is a really new energy culture. Energy transition, as I said before, is about decreasing. It's about changing our way of, of consume. Because I'll give you a, a data to end, which is really revealing. If we now change all the fossil fuel, all the thermic vehicles we have in the world, we won't have uh, so uh, resources to produce the same amount of electric vehicles. So it's not about changing a technology. Technology will not save us. It's not about changing thermal vehicles to electric vehicles. It's about changing our way of consume and mainly reducing our uh, energy consumption. And this is all from my part. Thank you very much for attending. And if you have any question, I'll be uh, here for answer. Thank you.